annually and talk about the climate of what is happening in both the countries. Because we understand, I am Christine Macklin, I'm the Human Rights Director for Unifor, which is the largest private sector union in Canada. We represent 315,000 members, so I'm a department of one. <laughs> so it's, a, it's an exhausting time right now. I am not going to get into affiliations of parties. I am not going to tell people how to vote. But what I will say is if we leave anyone behind, we are failing. Mm. And as a black woman, I can tell you even up to yesterday, racism was smack dab in the middle of my face. Mm. In Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Atlanta. And we went to a restaurant after getting up and I talked about mental health. We passed a resolution on the recognition that black people in Canada need services that are in an equitable time, that is appropriate, culturally appropriate, because the days of laying on beds and telling people that don't look like us what's going on in their life and being told that racism ends is a lie. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. So we recognize that there needs to be programs created for us by us. But in solidarity with all communities, we have to recognize as women yes. that we do, we are facing oppression. All women face oppression, but not equally. Mm. Women, indigenous women and women of color with disabilities makes 17 cents on a man's dollar, a white man's dollar. Mm. So we need to stop talking about the wage gap as being 82, 83 cents because that's only one small group of women. So my job is to call it what it is and speak the truth. So yesterday I went to a restaurant and I was with a number of my colleagues from my union. As I got up to pay, God forbid a woman got up to pay, the brother looks at me and goes, you're not really black. Mm. You're not really that dark. Your hair is blonde. And it kind of threw me back a little bit. It really did. Because I did expect racism in Atlanta, Georgia, but I did not expect it at the hands of another person of color. Mm. So I said to the person, you need to get out of Atlanta. Mm. You need to experience life. We come in all shades, sizes. Yes, yes. We are damn well proud to be black. Yes, yes. yes. And so he kind of pulled back and I said, and I'm a little bit, I'm me. I'm Christine from the block, so I got to keep it real with them. <laughs> I really do. So I'm like, by the way, here's my card. I'm the Human Rights Director for Unifor. Anytime you want to come to Canada, I'll gladly educate you that what you just did was and will always be racism and discrimination. Mm. And by the way, I see how you're treating that young woman over there that you gladly told us that you are only using her to work in your restaurant because she came in for a meal. I feel blessed. And I feel blessed because I find at times when I want to give up, I can't. Because those types of moments will show up right there in front of me. And I realize that my ancestors did not give up. Jean Augustine, Honorable Jean Augustine, did not give up. That no matter what our race, our age, our gender identity, our gender expression, our sexual orientation, our abilities, that we stand on each other's shoulders and as long as we continue to fight for the most marginalized people in leadership, then we will be doing the right thing. Yes, yes. So I decided at that point, I'm done. I'm done, I'm not gonna stand here and feel horrible. I was really angry, I actually wanted to go back into the restaurant and not be the human rights director. <laughs> you know, because you got it twisted, I'm not the one. But what I said is, let's go to the Civil Rights Museum. Mm, so, That will do a number for you. And again, I am blessed mm. because one of the first audios that I heard was the great Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, yes. And what he said is, I do not want to be, I have thought about my death. I do not want to be recognized about my PhDs or my titles. I want to be recognized as doing what's right for humanity. Yes. And it's true. Yeah. We have to think about it like that. I am not only representing the 315,000 members of Unifor. I'm representing every marginalized person in any community that is left out of any conversation. Because when you ask communities that are facing oppression, are you a leader? What do you think their answer is? No. Nope. You think they're saying yes? No. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. I will ask people in a room, 
How many of you are leaders? How many of you in this room are leaders? Okay, keep your hands up. How many of you volunteer in your churches? Please put your hands up with them. How many of you volunteer or coordinate things in your community? How many of you are here right now to learn about everything that we want to grow? Yeah. Everyone in this room is a leader. Yes, yes. yes. I am yes, not yes. here as a special leader. I'm not. I come from the community. I come from my experience. And I speak about it. And I'm not scared to speak about it, but I will tell you this as a black woman, I am expected to take care of my household. You go, girl. But yet, as the Honorable Jean Augustine said, I'm in the process of going through a divorce because I'm supposed to be at home. But yet I'm supposed to speak up about oppression. I'm supposed to challenge it. I'm supposed to be the backbone of my community or any community that I live in because I actually grew up and born in Scarborough, moved to Windsor about 10 years ago, restarted my life, and I became a foundation within Windsor as one of the only few black women that was doing work within the community. And it really did, and it really did take a toll on me. And there were times in my mental health that I questioned, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through this?